Making a chef's knife and forge tools from salvaged steels. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China, where we use ancient Chinese designs and make modern cooking knives from them. In this case, we're doing something different, and we're making some cooking knives and tools from salvaged steels. This is Bobby Smith, the Backyard Sports. Today, we're going to make some edge tools from salvaged material. What this is, is a section of an old side, something you need to cut right. The original blade is about this long. That was used in a sweeping, gathering motion like this in connection with a wooden cradle to cut and gather grain. Uh, this was made sometimes in the 1800s. And they used for these side blades the best steel available to the track. These are thin and these are soft. So, using a cutting torch, an oxyacetylene torch, the profile the rough shape here of what is going to be a chef knot. I also salvaged another piece of steel from the lawnmower, and this is going to be made into a tool for cleaning out my fork. And this curved edge like this works very well to get around the sides and scoop up materials from my homemade fork. It uses a steel tie rim for a fireball. Yep. So we're going to start producing these new tools. Now, this is this little six-inch grinder is something I wisely postponed buying for decades. And I guess about he got all the goody out of his wheel. I do, in fact, have a replacement. But I'm going to do this rough and dirty work using the small wheel and get the last little bit of use out of it that I can. I actually straightened this piece of steel first as a trough to make sure he wouldn't shatter before I tried to straighten our blade that we we're actually making here. And as you see, yeah, I got that bend out of it. There are actually two kinks, one here and one here. And so we got those worked out on the anvil. We now have our forge cleaner brushed down the bright metal on both sides. And also, these edges sort of made smooth. Now, we are going to put a handle on this, so it'll be retained. Well, let's say we put four pins right here. One, two, three, four. And then extend the handle out about there. We spotted our holes for our forge cleaner here. And also for our Billy Joe Rubido chef's knife. One, two, three. We're now going to proceed to drill sink. Now we're going to do the other three likewise, except we're going to put these cutting oil on. Now you see we finished up with our knife. You can see the three holes we drilled here. And we've also finished up on our forge too. The next thing we're going to do with our grill cleaning tool is to first wipe it down with alcohol, get any grease off it, and now we're going to give it a coating with black paint. Uh, this is a spray enamel paint. Now this tool, even though it's going to be used in a forge, is only used when the forge is dry and cool to just clean out the ash. So this doesn't really have to stand a lot of heat. So uh, we're going to give it a coating and just let it dry.
So now we have it coated and we're going to let it dry and go out and seek some handle material. What I've chosen for handle material is tea olive. Now this I've had in storage for a goodly number of years and you can see it's, it contains a fork and it's also aged. Now tea olive takes on interesting spalting and I don't know if this is heavily spalted or not but we'll find out when we break into it. We have split the tea olive and we do get some interesting spalting showing up right in here and a little bit linear here. Now we have a piece that we can put on the bandsaw and actually cut into slabs that we can use for knife scales. And now we can fire up the bandsaw and to proceed to cut some scales. Well, that was a little treacherous on the bandsaw blade, but this shows you some of the interesting texture that we're getting in this piece of wood. Now that I have a block, I'm going to try to make these two lines parallel so I can square things up, and that will aid the rest of the cutting and grinding. We're going to have four holes it will actually hold the pins. So I want to make sure that we get these well on and well indexed. And this is also in the more solid part of the wood. This is commonly known as a knife making machine. In actuality it's a belt sander. It has a 72 inch, 2 inch thick belt here uh, which is impregnated. Uh, this is the coarsest one I happen to have and so we're going to use it to quickly reduce uh, the thickness on this and even it up. Uh, this is a rest. It allows you to actually place the material exactly where you want it and this platen here enables you to get an absolutely vertical edge. So all of this I want to do. Soft wood, so it's working it down pretty fast. Okay, now that is a surface I can work with. Now what we're going to do is freehand drill the first two holes. When we drill the first one, we'll put a pin in it to hold it. Then we'll drill the second one and put a pin in that one and so on until we get all four holes drilled. with a nail, we'll go ahead and put this one in. So using these nails and actually the holes in the blade for the template, we drill four holes in our handle to be. Now that I have a block of wood for the handle, I'm going to use the bandsaw and cut a slot right down to the middle back to here. Then I will actually fit the blade, pin it and glue it in, and then finish the shape of the grip. We're back at our little bench grinder again. and We're now ready to start actually shaping the grip on our forge tool. 
Now, whilst we were doing with wood, we also cut the scales for our chef's knife. Now, these are the sides that will actually fit onto the grip itself. So they will go like this. And we took these and took great care to get them as nearly true and level as we can. So these were ground flat. Now our tang is not altogether flat, so there will be some gaps which we will fill in with shoe goo uh, when we do the work. Our little grinding wheel has still got some work left in it, so we're going to use it. On our knife making machine, we've now changed to a 120 grit. And we're actually going to start the detailed profiling of this edge here on both sides and do a little bit of shaping here on the handle. Although the handle does not need to do, although we don't need to do too much here uh, because we're going to grind the grips as well as the wood together. That's how you fit them. This part of the edge should be flat. I think this is a little bit fat here. Okay, we start the first line on the other side of the blade. We have now put an edge on our blade. Now this steel was fairly well tempered in its day. And will it cut yet? Well, let's see. See how it does. I'm feeling a little drag in the blade. Uh-uh. Tore. Alright. Starting to tear. What this tells me is that this blade is still not the temper it should be. I have sharpened it. You can even sharpen a non-tempered steel and it will cut well for a little bit. But uh, we have lost the temper on the edge with all the work we've done to it. So we're going to need to retemper this blade. And after that, then we'll put an edge on it and it will hold its edge. We now have our pins in and I've started the initial grounding of the grip here on the belt sander. And so now it's just a matter of putting it on the sander and slowly working it down. We have now ground the handle round and have taken our shoe goo 
and made up a paste of wood dust and shoe goo and used this pallet knife to push the shoe goo dust mix down in any of the worm holes that were opened and this will help seal them. Uh, this needs to stay on the handle for four or five hours and use real pressure around where you have any obvious gaps because that's certainly where you want material. Some progress has been made. As you can see on our forge tool here, we have filled, final sanded, and stained our tea olive. Now incidentally, on our rib flipper here, this is also tea olive, exactly the same wood, and these are the scales also of tea olive that were cut for our chef's knife here. So we're ready to put the final seal on this handle now that we have it shaped and filled. Now it still has very many porous areas from these wormholes. So what I'm going to do is something unusual that I've not personally done before. Instead of trying to paint it or rub the finish in, we're actually going to dip it in polyurethane like this. So we get maximum contact and fill and dwell time. You can see a few bubbles coming up. That's good. So I want this to get all through the material and have a chance to soak in. Okay. Blot it there on the bottom, allow any drip to come down, and then we will hang this up and let it proceed to dry. I'm now ready to illustrate the use of our forge tool. And here we have it now, completed, with this tea olive grip nicely finished. So what we use a forge tool for is to clean out the forge. That is to remove the ashes, and any unburned charcoal. Now this ash material has value because I use it when actually we're kneeling steel. So you can see how the shape of the two enables me to rake up the material from the top of the forge, nicely scoop it up, and put it in bucket for later use. Voila! No reason to let all this good charcoal go to waste. Right. So we're going to cook some sausage on the grill. And here is the completed Billy Joe Rubido chef's knife. Here are some of the patterns that we'll be producing from our Hovey's Knives of China knives. Now I will also have other videos about Billy Joe Rubido chef's knife and how we retemper, sharpen, and actually test it. And we will also make other knives in the Billy Joe patterns using salvage materials. For information on my books, blogs, and videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. There's a link here for Hovey's Knives of China. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.